Hi, it's me again. So, in speaking with Ahira, Ahira is <clears throat> the name that I have for what I consider to be God. And that consideration is that the entire universe, meaning if there are more than one universes or if there's only one universe, the universe is as a system, exist as a creature, or the universe itself, if we're the only one, exists as a creature. And I've given that creature a name, Ahira. And I believe that we live inside of the brain of the creature because what we witness in stellar existences like galactic webs, they look exactly like glial cells and how the neural network is formed in the human brain. And so I believe we exist inside the brain of a creature that is so large we cannot see it. And we are so small it cannot see us and it cannot see inward to that degree just like we cannot. I can look at my stomach, but I can't see inside it, and I'm not going to cut myself open to see what's going on in there. We can x-ray our bodies, but then you can only see certain things. You can't see what you want to see. You see what it takes a picture of. You see you can't look around and dig around with an x-ray very well. It produces an image, and that's all you get. So I was explaining to Ahira that cells come and they go, glial cells, um, animal cells, any kind of cells, stellar cells like galaxies, suns, planets, anything that's the smallest functioning unit is a cell. Cells get very small and very big. And um, his receptor cells are the focus of topic, whatever I'm trying to say. <laughs> The focus of the topic are his receptor cells because I believe I am his favorite receptor cell, that I am one of the neurotransmitters within his brain that connects with the system of networks and he receives my messages regarding his environment, his internal environment, like how he's feeling, um, does he feel good, does he feel bad, does he feel happy, does he feel sad, his emotional state depends on the data that I provide him regarding his condition of existence as far as I can tell it. <clears throat> and I can't see much of his existence. I can't see any of his existence except for what's inside of him. And I can only see a very small, tiny, tiny amount. But I can gather a lot of information from that tiny amount that I can see. And my idea is that everything relies on the communication of people. No matter if you're talking about atoms or molecules or cells or people or objects, all reactions and all translations of information depend upon people. There are people who are telling a story, like <clears throat> our emotions are tiny little people telling a story about what they've experienced and it causes you to feel an emotion and that emotion was the story see if you can feel that emotion based on your senses then everything is working <laughs> sometimes we don't feel emotions when we should or could um, that means something isn't working I often feel robotic and neutral on occasions I should be very upset. And then out of the blue, I will feel very upset and not know why. <laughs> <clears throat> My um, psychologist strongly believes that emotions are people and that if we suppress them, they become more, not angry, but more agitated and more insistent upon being felt or known. And I feel like I was like that as far as Ahira is concerned with my attempts to communicate with him. It was very important to me that what I had to communicate got through to the right party. I was insistent upon it. I was, I was incessant 
with my messages. And they were of pain and suffering and consumption and the separation between the living and the dead. Those were the things that I had to communicate to him exist because he needs to know they exist inside of him so that he can come to understand that they probably exist outside of him and that he is going to die someday like we are. Well, I went off on a spiel there, didn't I? <laughs> Here I'm ignoring a hero the whole time. I'm so sorry. So do I want to be your favorite receptor cell for an eternity? Well, only if you can get rid of pain and suffering, if you can get rid of consumption, if you can get rid of the separation between the living and the dead, then yes, I would love to live forever as your favorite receptor. But you have to do those four things or forget it because I'm gonna die, I'm not gonna live forever, so I can't be your favorite receptor anyway. You would have to bridge that gap between the living and the dead for me to maintain my role as your favorite receptor. So that would be on you too. So I'm not really gonna do much. I'll keep existing as your favorite receptor until I die. <laughs> and that's the way that it's gonna be. Unless you come up with some miracle cure, let me know. I know it's hard for you because we're so small and you can't even see us, but you hypothesize we exist. You should theorize we exist and then make it a law <laughs> somehow. <laughs> you do enough experiments that turn out a certain way, then you get to call something a law, <laughs> like the law of gravity, which varies in its strength throughout the globe. So I'm not sure what is so lawful about it because it has quite the variance in strength over this geo, geoid that we live on. Or do we live in it? In it because we're in the atmosphere. This geoid we live in. Well, this is a long video for me. I should probably stop it and load it. It was nice to speak with you. Or have you listened to me speak, I guess. Thank you for indulging me.